Hello there, everybody. Hope you're doing well. As some or maybe most of you know, there's kind of a sports imperialism trend going on right now with these types of videos. It all started, I believe, with an NFL one. I will link the original NFL one as well as any NHL ones that are already out I can find down in the description. I knew that there was probably going to be a bunch coming out, so I wanted to change it up a little bit and kind of put my own twist on it. So the way this one will be working is I will randomize two teams from within a division, and those two teams will be playing each other. The first team it lands on will have the home ice advantage. When a team loses, they are done, conquered, if you will, and the team that beat them takes their best player. Best player was determined by overall. If there was a tie, then I would go to the X factors and abilities. And if there was a tie there, then I would kind of just make a judgment call based on a position they needed. You know, if they already had a good goalie, I'm not going to give them another good goalie. If a team that has conquered another team loses, then the team that beat them gets the players that they've acquired as well as the best player from their original team. With that being said, one team could play multiple games in a row which could be good and bad, because if they keep winning, then they're going to keep improving their team. But it only takes one loss for you to be put out. Teams must first conquer their division, and then their conference, and finally, the league. Hopefully that all makes sense. This video has taken quite a bit of time and effort, so if you could subscribe, that would be sick. But if you just genuinely don't feel like doing that, fair enough. Let's get it started. Our first matchup is the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Boston Bruins. The Tampa Bay Lightning do not have to worry about salary cap in this situation. So they have that going for them. Pretty boring first period overall, but Greer will score with 3.43 on the clock to get the Bruins up by one goal. The Lightning do strike in the second though. Braden Point gets a nice pass from the point and he buries it. It's a 1-1 hockey game. Now in overtime, the Bruins running into some penalty trouble here. A great one-timer almost prevents McAvoy from having to sit in the bin. But a great save by Almar keeps it going. However, Lightning does strike again. Kucherov walks in in second overtime to end this one. And the Tampa Bay Lightning conquer the Boston Bruins. Welcome to Sunrise, Florida. The Panthers taking on the Senators. And I'm kind of jealous because there's a lot of snow here right now. So Florida sounds kind of cool at this point in time. A nice keep in at the point there allows Moose to Ryan in to put the Panthers up by one. One timer in the slot will be buried. We see a buzzer beater here from Derek Broussard. Four seconds to go in the first period. It's all tied up headed into period number two. Bennett on the back door, picks up his own rebound after a mini game of Plinko in front of the net. Cousins going off for slashing. Senators cannot capitalize on that, however. Time is running out. Senators desperately trying to get a goal here to send this thing to overtime. A great shot will be saved, and that will seal the Senators' fate. The Florida Panthers conquer the Ottawa Senators. A tried and true classic matchup here. The Montreal Canadiens taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Bell Center in the first period. Engvall finds Kerfoot in the slot. He makes no mistake, sending it home, putting the Leafs up by one. Now in the third period, another goal from the Toronto Maple Leafs gives them the insurance marker with 10 to go. They almost get a third here, but Jake Allen standing on his head, keeping his team in this one, giving them a real shot. Unfortunately, his efforts were in vain. Bunting gets the empty netter and ensures the Toronto Maple Leafs conquest over the Montreal Canadiens.
The Detroit Red Wings taking on the Buffalo Sabres. We've seen all eight teams before one team played twice. I don't know what the odds are of that happening, but probably not very good. Detroit strikes first, two to go in the first, giving them a 1-0 lead. Buffalo on the attack here in the second period. A nice shot will be saved. In the third, they also get a great chance, and Tage Thompson scores to tie this thing up at one. Buffalo not done there, though. A pass from behind the net will be buried on the short side by Paterka, putting them in the lead. They do take a penalty here late on in the third, giving Detroit a chance to get back into this thing. But they cannot capitalize. A gruesome mistake by that defender. Clearly, he wanted to be conquered. Ocpozo buries it. No mistakes made. And that would seal the fate for the Detroit Red Wings. The Sabres right back at it here. This time they are at the Key Bank Center taking on the Florida Panthers. The Panthers have picked up ADB and the Sabres just picked up Larkin from that last game. That shot sent into outer space. Elon Musk is a little bit jealous about that one. Rumor has it anyway. The Sabres taking a penalty from all that. I don't even know what happened there and you know what? I don't want to know. Whatever happened, let's just leave it at that. A nice one-timer there by Matthew Kachuk. Gives the Florida Panthers a one-goal lead. Bobrovsky makes a good save late on, and Florida takes down the Sabres. Florida starting to build up quite the army here. They have Larkin, Dahlin, and ADB. The Toronto Maple Leafs do have Suzuki from their matchup against the Montreal Canadiens. Angval going to get two chances here in the first period, but Bobrovsky standing tall and meets the challenge on both of those shots. Colin White is found in the middle, streaking to the net. He lets a floater go, and that finds its way into the back of the net, putting the Panthers up by one goal. Another great chance. Late on in the second, but no can do. The least very questionable netminder pull there, but it kind of worked out for the Matthews up close, can't score, and the Panthers take down the Leafs as well. It's time to find out which team will conquer the Atlantic Division. It's going to be a team from Florida, but which team is the question we are here to answer today. Florida's added quite a few players. Tampa has not played since the very first game where they took pasta from the Boston Bruins. First period, time expiring, but Bennett finds Radko Gudis on the back door, and he manages to tuck it in. Hedman, a nice pass over to Hagel who streaks in towards the net, celebrates with the crossbar, tied up at one. Barkov takes a shot down low, a little bit of a scramble in front of the net. It finds its way to Dylan Larkin. He is going to send it home, giving the Panthers a one goal lead. And just to put the icing on the cake, Barkov is found on the back doorstep. And it will be the Panthers emerging victorious from the Atlantic. We're staying in the East, but we are moving on to the Metropolitan Division, which I am just going to call the Metro as everyone else does because Metropolitan is simply too much and I don't feel like saying it. Sebastian Ajo finds Pacioretty, so the jerks strike first, and that was early on as well. Didn't take too long. Not much happened until the second period. A rush all the way down the ice. Cole Sillinger found in the middle. And he will tie this thing up. However, before the second expires, another pass backdoor from Teravine and will be buried. And the Canes go into the third period up by one. Teravine lets an absolute stinker go. But that puck was the little engine that could. 
The insurance marker for the Canes was all they needed to take down the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Jerks hopping right back into the action here, taking on the New York Rangers at MSG with their newly acquired Johnny Goudreau, who gets a look early on here, but Igor Shosturkin with a massive save to keep this thing tied at zero. Pacioretty would find Natchez in the slot. He makes no mistake, burying it post and in, maybe crossbar, I can't really see in this video editing preview. What a goal by Vinny Trocek. Are you kidding me with that one? Off the glass, I think he did that on purpose. You know, I can't interview him or anything, but if I had to guess, definitely looked calculated. Carolina takes down the Rangers. We are staying in New York. It is the Islanders taking on the Flyers. I love how on Google Earth the UBS Arena is still under construct. Is that construction? I don't even know what's going on there. Regardless, without a roof, the Islanders score first. So maybe that's what happened. You know, they literally took the roof off the place. They score again. Wallstrom backdoor. Gonna just tap it in. Leaving the Islanders... A two-goal lead, but that will be cut in half by JVR. Late pressure here from the Flyers. Frost in the middle. A one-timer will be saved. Another save. Sorokin is on fire. And the Islanders take down the Flyers. Fresh off of acquiring Sean Couturier from the Flyers, the Islanders right back in the action here at UBS Arena. A nifty little move from Hughes, won't amount to anything right away. It's a bit of a slow burn here, shot on net, and it will be put in by none other than the New York Islanders captain. So that is very unfortunate and not the start they are looking for. Brat decides he's going to shoot it after a failed pass attempt and that would succeed, giving the Devils a 2-0 lead. Wallstrom has something to say about that though. He cuts through basically the entire team, gets his own rebound. Lead is down to 1. Time expiring here in the second period. Barzell will rip one top cheese. It's a tie hockey game going into the third period. But it will not stay that way. Pelic gets the puck down to Bailey. Burying it, giving the Islanders a lead. New Jersey in panic mode. Time running out, and they can't get a shot on net. The Islanders will go on to conquer New Jersey. Literally the third straight game at the UBS Arena. The Islanders holding down the four here. I'd also like to point out that after that first game with the Boston Bruins and the Tampa Bay Lightning, I decided it'd be funnier to let teams win in a shootout because it is conquest, you know? So, like, war, a shootout, I, it just makes more sense to me. And plus, it's good hockey. I don't get why people don't like that being the decision maker. Oh, what if your team loses to a shoot? I don't care. They should have won then. Anyway, rant over. Should probably be focusing on the game. So I'm going to do that real quick. Great pass. Wonderful shot. But Sorokin just continues to be a brick wall. So there's that. Big hit. And there will be a Tilly. Here they go. Carolina, New York Islanders. I believe this is our first fight. The Flying Helmet. A truly classic. You can't have a fight without a piece of flying equipment. It's just not right. Carolina comes out on top in the Tilly. Now moving on to overtime. Couturier coughs it up. Pesci is in on a breakaway. He goes forehand back in and he tries to tuck it. But Sorokin once again not allowing it to happen. He will allow a goal there though. Svechnikov going to be the first one to score in the fifth shot of the shootout. 
The Islanders fail to keep it going. And that means we will finally no longer be seeing the UBS Arena. Carolina's got, you know, maybe a couple players added here to their team from their conquest so far, taking on the Washington Capitals. I'm allowed to say that because they're my team. Connor Brown going to put the Capitals up, and Oshi will add to that. Makes it a 2-0 lead in the first period. I don't know how this is happening, but it sure is. Anthony Mantha will go on to tuck that home. And that will give them a 3-0 lead. Darcy Kemper standing on his head gets a shutout. And the Capitals somehow manage to take down the Carolina Hurricanes. I'm having playoff trauma right now from this matchup. It's the Pity Pens taking on the Washington Capitals, who've added a lot of players after they took down the Carolina Hurricanes, who did all the work for them, pretty much. And they just came in and said, I'll be taking that, thank you very much. The Penguins do strike first, Malkin scores, putting the Pens up by one, and it would remain that way for quite some time. In the third period, it is time for the Capitals to panic now. They have all these players added to their roster. If they get taken down here, that would be brutal. Several chances, but they can't seem to find the back of the net until Couturier lets one rip at the Hashies. Just beating Jari on the glove side. Crosby goes bar south. Are you kidding me? And then Malkin will also bury one. So clearly the pen's pretty good in the shootout here. Goudreau will not score, and the Penguins take down the Washington Capitals. I feel like I've said that too many times in the past, and I'm saying it again. With the East decided, it is time to move on to the West. The St. Louis Blues and the Smashville Predators. I'm pretty sure they're a rivalry. So that's a good starting matchup to have here, you know? It's a good introduction to the West. Nashville has a good chance early on there. They can't score, though, but they do there. Colton going to bury one on the nervous guy, putting them up by one. And then Colton would get his second of the game. What do you mean I'm fired? It was a joke. I don't know if I just think that everything in the West is a rivalry, but I'm fairly confident that this is one as well. The Wild and the... Or at least it used to be, I believe. Anyway, Minnesota going to strike first. What a play. Boldy is sitting in the slot. And he scores. Which is a one-goal lead for the Minnesota Wild. They try to make it two, but they can't do so because the netminder for the Colorado Avalanche standing on his head, but he gets scored on anyway. Jordan Greenway... Walks in, and he scores. That will make it a 2-0 hockey game. But the Avalanche not going down without a fight. Nice pass in the middle. An attempt to stack the mini wheats. I gotta, you know, give credit to the effort. That was incredible from that goalie. That wasn't, however. McDonald buries it. It's a 2-2 hockey game. The puck meets Irene for the wild. Sending this thing to overtime. Ranton and strips the puck. As soon as the overtime starts here, pretty much, goes for a little toe draggy, but referee says no, sir. Nate Mack will take exception to that, though. Scores, and there you have it. Colorado Avalanche take down the Minnesota Wild.
I don't think this one's a rivalry. But watch this be the only one that is. Or something like that. Anyway, Dallas taking on the Winnipeg Jets. The only Canadian team in the Central Division. And they get scored on by Captain America. He's in front and he tucks it home. Big hit there. And we will have our second scrap of this conquest. Whatever you want to call it. Dallas wins the fight. Getting some valuable momentum. But Winnipeg basically says, hey, I don't need momentum to score. Blake Wheeler buries it, tying it up. And then again, the Jets on the attack. Nikolai Ehlers takes a clap bomb in the slot. It is a lead for the Jets in the third period. Dallas almost ties it up. Gets past the goalie, but can't beat the post. Nashville taking on Chicago with Ryan O'Reilly in their lineup. First period. Game pretty much just started. And Chicago coming out flying. Jonathan Taze will bury the rebound from Kane. That puts them up by one. Duchesne behind the net. Finds Granny Smith in the slot. And this thing is all tied up. Quite the first period compared to what we have seen. And then Ryan O'Reilly on his new squadron. Gonna get his own rebound. We have ourselves a lead for the Smashville Predators. They're trying to make it a two goal lead and they succeed. Colton once again finds the back of the net. It's the Yotes, it's the Jets. Jason Robertson looking to make an impact on his new team here. Power play for the Jets. Early on they get a chance up close but can't score. A scoreless first period leads us into the second. Quite the barrage going on from the Winnipeg Jets and Robertson does in fact make a massive contribution for his new squad, giving them a one nothing lead. Dubois will add to that, making it a two goal lead. Ehlers wants in on the fun. Gives the goalie a little how you doing after he scores as well. And just because, why not? Stenlin takes a shot. Gagne crashes the net. It is a 4-0 victory for the Winnipeg Jets. It is the Predators and the Avalanche. Kirill the Thrill there for the Avs. We got Ryan O'Reilly and Patrick Kane playing for the Smashville Predators. Nate Mack strikes first. Kirill gets it to Ranton and who goes back in. We have a 2-0 lead for the Colorado Avalanche who are also getting physical. Nashville takes an exception to that. Starts throwing the body around a little bit here as well. Late in the third now. Still a two-goal lead. Smashville trying to get on the board. But they cannot succeed. Granlin to pass in the middle. That is saved as well. Colorado takes down the Predators. The Central Finals will be played at Ball Arena in Denver, Colorado. The Avalanche taking on the Jets to see who will emerge from the Central Division. Ehlers gets drilled, but also scores. So I don't think he's too upset about that. Landis Cog hands it off to Rantanen, and he also gives the goalie how you doing. These guys love doing that, apparently. I'd be pissed if I was the goalie, personally, but these guys, clearly they're better than me. All right, more patience. Kyle Connor buries it. 2-1, Winnipeg Jets. Kirill, been outstanding for the Avalanche so far. 
And he ties it up at two. This game is no exception. In overtime, Landeskog hands it off to Yossi. And the defenseman from the Nashville Predators leads the Colorado Avalanche to conquer the Central Division. Last and certainly least. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's the Pacific Division. Who, by the way, I think have the coolest colors based on the wheel. The Kings taking on the Vancouver Canucks as the first matchup here. Kings on the power play. They will capitalize another mini wheat stack attempt. That's 0 for 2 on those. But hey, at least they're trying. Elias Pettersson will score to tie this thing up at 1. In the third period now. A blistering along the ice shot. Will be saved by field there for the rebound, and the Kings take down the Canucks. San Jose hosting the Seattle Kraken for our second contest in the Pacific Division. Schwartz receives a pass, is bodied on his way to the net though. McCann picks it up, gets a shot. That is saved. Hurdle also robbed on the doorstep. We won't see any goals in regulation. It is overtime where Hurdle finds his way to the corner and on the back door, Timo Meyer ready to bury it. He succeeds, the Sharks take down the Kraken. After winning at home, the Sharks are kind of on the road. They're playing the Anaheim Ducks at the Honda Center. A draw early on in the first period here. A shot from Meyer will be stopped by John Gibson in fairly dramatic fashion. Henrique is found by Mason McTavish, putting the Ducks up by one. Heading into the second period now. McTavish again. He's been incredible in this one, apparently. Has an apple and now a bingo as well. Silverberg crashing the net, and what a cheeky little goal that was. Puts it between the mini wheats, and that will do it. The Anaheim Ducks take down the San Jose Sharks. After taking down the Sharks, the Ducks pick up EK65 and Andre Burakovsky to go head on head with the Calgary Flames at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Toffoli finds his way to the net early on, but Gibson will keep the door shut for now. Again, Calgary in the zone. Hannafin gets a shot that is blocked. He picks it up though and finishes what he started to give Calgary a one goal lead. 40 seconds remaining. Ducks empty net. Calgary has an easy opportunity to bury the shot. And I don't know what he was doing. What? Just shoot it. But he ends up scoring anyway. So somehow he still gets rewarded. Calgary takes down the Ducks. We're staying in Alberta, but this time we are in Edmonton, the Rogers place. I don't know why I'm being so hard on California. Honestly, New York is probably worse. They probably have teams a lot closer, but anyway, I just thought of it and kind of ran with it. 
Nuge gets the Oilers up by one. McLeod decides he wants to add to that. Makes it a 2-0 lead. For the Oilers, a great chance backdoor there. One-timer. Misses the net quite miserably, though. Golden Knights, empty net. Trying to get on the board. And they can't seem to do so. Quite the attack going here to just try and get anything. Literally anything. But they can't do it. The Edmonton Oilers go on to take down the Golden Knights 3-0 after McLeod's second goal of the game. The Los Angeles Kings with Petey taking on the Edmonton Oilers with Jack Eichel. Will we have a Battle of Alberta final for the Pacific Division or will the LA Kings spoil that and have a US versus Canada Pacific final? Let's find out. Eichel passes it to Kane who just misses the net. Hyman picks it up, not able to get the quick release. No goals in the first or second period. And now in the third, Sean Walker buries it in his own net. That's the wrong one. It's 1-0 Oilers. McDavid gets absolutely rocked to make the play. Hyman not able to finish it, unfortunately. But they do get an empty netter. And we will, in fact, have the Battle of Alberta for the Pacific Finals. This one's a rivalry. Never been so sure of something in my life. It's the Battle of Alberta, Calgary versus Edmonton. Both teams have added three players on their journey to conquer the Pacific Division, and this will determine who goes on to play the Colorado Avalanche for the entire Western Conference. Andrew has a B-way, he buries it, and then McDavid gets a breakaway. Let's be real, he would have been gone. It is NHL 23, so that's why it didn't happen, but he would have been eight miles ahead of that defender. It is what it is. Lindholm rips one blocker side. It's a 2-0 game. Edmonton, only four minutes to go here. A big hit in the slot. Eichel can't bury it, but Zach Hyman sure can this time around. It's a 2-1 game. Petey makes a lethal mistake. A no-look pass is picked off. And the empty netter will be buried to have a 3-1 lead and just because they can they score another empty netter from outside the blue line the AI just simply don't do that fantastic scene Calgary wins the Pacific These teams are locked and loaded at this point. The Pittsburgh Penguins emerge victorious from the Metro. The Florida Panthers from the Atlantic. It's time to find out which team will conquer the entire Eastern Conference. The Penguins getting some looks early on. And Vasilevsky standing tall. The third period is when we will see our first goal. David Pasternak in the slot. It's going to rip one home. And that opens the floodgates. Kachuk on the back doorstep. This is not the third period. The Penguins were looking for Sam Reinhardt. Adds to it. ADB decides he wants in on the fun. He scores as well. And one more just for good luck. Matthews goes backhand to forehand. Almost another one. They almost made it six. That was almost a six goal third period from the Florida Panthers. They convincingly conquer the Eastern Conference. Colorado Avalanche, Calgary Flames, the winner will conquer the entire Western Conference and take on the Florida Panthers to conquer the league. Early chance for Colorado, not able to score, but a penalty 
will be taken by the Flames. Avalanche, do not... What was that? Like, literally, what was that? What are you trying there? Okay, your team's existence is on the line, and you're doing that. I'd be very upset if I was the coach, but regardless, a goaltender's duel ensues in this one. Third period, still no goals. Markstrom puts on an absolute clinic. In overtime here as well, keeps his team alive. I can't believe how well this guy's playing. It's literally insane. Colorado with a chance. A big hit, though, sends Drew Doughty and Connor McDavid on a two-on-one against Kale McCarr. Doughty picks up his own rebound, and Calgary will move on to play Florida in the finals for the ultimate conquest. By a legitimate sliver, the Florida Panthers get home ice advantage. We're back in Sunrise. I feel like we've been here quite a bit. And we're back, baby, for the Calgary Flames Florida Panthers Ultimate Conquest matchup. Matthews has a shot. That will be stopped. Robertson steals the puck off the defender. Able to walk in. That will be stopped as well. Just listen to that. It's X-Factors after X-Factors. They're going off like popcorn in this one. Lindholm tries to walk out, go short side on Vasilevsky, but he will not be defeated that easily. Hellebuck, another easy save there for him as well. A great chance for Calgary as the second expires. If he had one more second, they might have gone into the third up by one. No goals in regulation. We are headed to OT, where Matthews has a breakaway and an amazing back check prevents him from closing this one out. 48 seconds remaining in overtime. Another great chance and another phenomenal save. These goalies are both really trying to win. You know, I don't know why they wouldn't be. But here it is. The ultimate prize comes down to the captain after I think it was nine rounds. And he does it. Barkov, the captain, ends it all in the Florida Panthers conquer the entire NHL. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon.